So sorry for the new video format. Uh, I just wanted to kind of bring a little bit of news about a recent trip I took to Hungary. Uh, early July, I went to Budapest to see one of these researchers. His name was uh, Dr. Georgi Egli, and he was involved in doing paranormal research back in the 1970s, but his credentials were all there. He was a nuclear engineer. He was involved in the, the Budapest University. For more information uh, on his credentials, you can take a look at the interview I posted of him a few videos back. Uh, but during the line of questioning, I was asking him about his research with uh, a man named Pavlita from Czechoslovakia. I tried to pr basically prompt him. And I said, basically, this is not uh, like, like a pyramid power, pyramid science where people make cardboard pyramids and sell them and, and try to claim that they make all these amazing psychological effects. And he said, pyramid power is not a stupid idea. And then he directed me to one of his acquaintances, uh, Zoltan J. Kiss, who works as, he worked for 25 years in the nuclear power plant in Paksh, where he lives now. And he put me into contact with him and I took the two hour train ride down to Paksh and uh, he's got a lot of credentials too. So just so you know, this isn't some crazy guy experimenting. Uh, I have had him kind of lay out some of his background and I would just like to, before I show a little bit of that, congratulate him. He, he, just, uh, he just told me he was invited to give a series of lectures at the University of Southern California, one of the most prestigious universities in the country. So this isn't just some wild crazy guy making all these theories. Do you mind giving your name? and? Some of like the education background? Yeah, it's, I, it is Nupla power plant here. I was working 25 years in this plant and was the director of the maintenance uh, works. And uh, my education is uh, nuclear. And uh, I studied in Oxford, uh, Oxford, Oxford Brooks University, having an MBA, a management course. And after that, I in middle, in the in parallel with the nuclear business, and after that I worked ten years in the European Bank for reconstruction development, and then I started these de dealing with these quantum issues, uh, uh, reading the Einstein in the Imperial College. So it's uh, 2003, and you look. Uh, this is not just keep sitting down and creating this kind of issue. But look down what, what is here. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, try, a lot of uh, practice experiment, a lot of work is just, just coming to this point. This is my small laboratory. So when I first got to his yard, uh, he started showing me these, these pyramids that he built in the back. He had a series of three and he just had me make some observations on them. And uh, these are just a few observations, but he'll get into the, the real kind of weird stuff in a minute where he's able to demonstrate these temperature anomalies in real time, which is just, when you see it, you'll, you'll believe it. It's kind of a little bit wild what he's managed to do, but this is uh, the, the moment I got to his backyard and he started showing me these experiments that he's doing. So. I, do not, I do not examine you, just I would like to, you come to the point. What is your, what is your... Uh, uh, impression or or, or or definition now of the sizes of the pyramid of this like yes. what I can see I see it looks like there's uh, temperature readings on it yes exactly you see inside the the upper part is is colder the the the, 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 the other part is hot actually because it, here is the so it means the pyramid inside has a temperature difference and we will see, we will measure this temperature, temperature difference later. Just, just I wanted to show you this because, because it was, it was a, a little bit, little bit uh, bigger size. So, and I have two temperature measurements inside. Here are the temperature uh, detectors. So uh, we will speak about this. So this is here the temperature of the, of the Earth. The temperature of the Earth now is uh, is uh, 2.7 2.7 grade centigrade. You, you see this here? 2.7. 2.7. Yes. And what's the temperature of the pyramid? We, we will show that. Yeah, what is that? 
It gets hotter as it gets closer to the base. Yeah. No, it. It's 1.8 outside. So, inside temperature. It's the upper part. I don't know which is the upper part and which is the lower, lower part. This is 16, 15, 14. That's a surprising difference. Yeah, 13. It's going down, but we'll, be, we'll, we'll stop. 12. Eleven. You will see when, when stops. So the energy is generating it within the pyramid. So it's outside drawing in. The, the, the energy is the eight, this 8 and t 10 say, uh, grade centigrade is generating within the pyramid because the Earth below is 2.8. So if this com would come from the Earth, then the Earth would, should be higher than, than the pyramid inside. Yeah, agree with me? Yeah, so the pyramid is hotter than the ground underneath it. Yes. So the energy is generating within the pyramid itself because below, the earth below the pyramid is 2.9. Within the pyramid in, in, in a, the down, the, down style, the, 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 the low, lower part is eight and above was something four. So we can, we can take a look again to the, to the upper part, the temperature of the upper part. The upper part in the within the pyramid is going up because uh, because it needs the need time. So it's very like eight four. The surface is one point one point somewhere five below. But it's two point nine. So this is now. Uh, 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 no, it is going up, you see. This is now winter, and the energy is taking a quantum, uh, quantum, uh, quantum, um, uh, quantum impulse below the word, working out the, working this uh, in the is equilibrium status, and giving out, radiating out. So this is his first pyramid that he showed me. It's concrete, it's non-conductive, and <clears throat> he demonstrated the temperature of the ground underneath it with a digital thermometer, uh, which was uh, 2.7 degrees. It had just snowed, and uh, on the outside, on the base, he used an infrared thermometer, which read uh, 1.8 degrees. But then on the inside of his, his uh, pyramids, he has these thermocouples, which are reading the temperature directly from the inside. And it's there, when you ground the pyramid, that these weird, weird sort of anomalies start happening, which we'll see in just a minute. This is, this is just, can be explained, this is a process base. There's no way to explain that with the particle base. So the, 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 the gravita gravitation has two forms. The first form is when we, when we, when we, uh, when the apple falls down. This is a, this is the conversion V of the, of the, of the gravitation. But the gravitation is not just about this. The gravitation is a quantum impact which is coming from the, from the Earth. And because it's coming from the Earth, this, the, the conversion science, it calls it background radi radiation, background radiation. But it's not other than coming from the Earth as one, uh, one part of the, of, the, of the gravitation, a quantum impact of gravitation. You, and you see the, the surface, this surface is more, these four surfaces more than the basis of the, of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So the, the territory of below the pyramid is less 
than the, than the surface, the, the, the casing of the pyramid, yes? Yes. You agree with me? So the, 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 the quantum impact coming from the Earth has a conflict inside because the surface is more than the, than the basic surface. So coming in here is generating a, a, a conflicting process which generate energy. And this energy is, we will see because we, we measure it, this energy is the one which is the source of the, of the, of the, of the energy coming out. Uh, this is only, explanation can only give, give given by the process basis because the quantum impact is happening in time and the generation and the, and the process what is coming out from, from the pyramid also happens in time. This comes from his interpretation of he was reading the theory of relativity and he says he, he gives the example of in classical physics if you drop an apple it falls towards the earth but in the theory of relativity you have to consider the earth also falling up towards the apple because there is no closed system and the apple has a small almost negligible gravitational effect itself and he's proposing that the the downward force of gravity on the earth is also met by an upward force and this force striking the pyramid creates a quantum uh what i forget what word he used for it a quantum uh conflict is the word that he used and inside it generates heat and he's demonstrating in this clip a absolute uh, just, just certainty that the temperature inside the pyramid is higher and this temperature of the earth underneath it is much much lower around 2.8 which is already shown as the baseline meaning that the temperature is coming from within the pyramid and it's not being heated from the ground underneath it as you would expect so where is this uh, thermocouple reading from? This, there are three bars inside, three wires inside the pyramid just for collecting if any energy inside which is generating the temperature difference. This is the earth, you see? Yeah. Now we will, <coughs> you will, we will see the, the, so, 812 micro, uh, 0.8 volt. So, 8. Uh, in, in the summertime, I can measure also the amperage. But this is a, this is a, this is a, uh, temp, this is the uh, weather condition where the, 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 uh, the, the current coming out is, is so small that it cannot be measured. Uh, uh, it's about somewhere 0.4, uh, 0.3, 0 0.5 uh, milliampere in 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 normal in the normal uh, normal way in normal thermal conditions. And I would would like to just show to show to you that this is not a galvanic effect. You know, the galvanic effect is when when because the the, the, the the energy generating because the difference in materials because I have pyramid here which here you see this is here a, a isolation mm. folia so if I connect the voltage is 900 so the if this would be a galvanic effect this should be should be zero because this is a folia here you see, folia, folia. Mm -hmm. So when we, if this would be not a folia, then would be no, no voltage. So this is not a galvanic effect, this energy generating within the pyramid. This is a, this is a very important point, because, because those who, who, want to, who want to question this issue, in the, they say this is just be generating because the galvanic effect, which means there are different, uh, uh, differ the different materials uh, connecting together m may, might generate um, some kind of voltage difference. And I would like to show you now that, that there is a, uh, this is a current coming out because these two pyramids, 
It's very, it's very interesting. Communicate with each other. The, this pyramid is full of, full of uh, wires inside, cables inside. You see even the difference in the, in the, in the, in the structure. It's very interesting uh, view of the other, the, the other pyramid. The, the, the surface is different. So I connect these now here, here. This way, we go there. I connect. So this is this is the top of the pyramid. I hope I hope this is everything connected the right way. This is a uh, the earth here. Hey, look, the 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 same the same voltage. The, the, the difference because I have connected in different way. Mm. 600, 700 millivolt in that pyramid. Okay, I will just uh, change the, change the, change the uh, cables having uh, the right, the right direction. Okay, now it will be okay. So, 600 millivolt. The difference is that the upper part have been destroyed. I will, I will be say, I will say why. The, for the differ, for other experiment, so 700 millivolt there. Okay, mm -hmm. when I connect this this part, so now I'm connecting here this pyramid with the earth. So I will be I will be connecting this pyramid with the earth. But the point is there. So the, 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 the there is a, okay, I, I have to read with. So the point is that the pyramid if I change the, the, the situation, if I change the energy conditions in this pyramid, the other pyramids have a, have a reaction, and uh, the, the voltage of this pyramid starts to, to uh, the, the, the voltage is less. So the two are communicating. And the communication not because of the wire, because this is no connection here at all. This is a, this is a communication before the pyramids in the quantum quantum space. In the normal weather conditions, this is somewhere 50, 50 uh, milliampere, 50, uh, uh, no, no, 0 0.5 milliampere, 0 0.5, because the because the generation here is 0. Point, uh, 0. Point, uh, Five milliampere, roughly, and the difference is null null pine, null null fine, null null five uh, uh, milliampere. When I when I connect the earth, then the, the other the voltage of that other pyramid is changing. Okay, we will come. So it's important to remember when you take a look at these pyramids now that the one across the yard is not connected to the first one. There's just a series of uh, leads running from it over to the first one so that we can work on the first one getting readings from the second one which is what you're going to see on the orange uh, orange meter uh, so there's about 700 millivolts being produced in the farther pyramid and this is slightly less than the pyramid that we're working with now because he destroyed the base of it working on a series of experiments with time which I'll show in a minute, which is very fascinating uh, if it's not just some sort of a uh, normal anomaly, but it worked with two separate, uh, two separate systems. But uh, it's, it's inherently in, in these temperatures difficult to measure this, uh, this, t this change that they're communicating. But in normal conditions, it reads about uh, 0.5 milliampere of when you disconnect one pyramid 
it changes in the other pyramid. And it's non-galvanic because, of course, they're just, they're very far away from each other. And he's grounding the close pyramid. He's not grounding the far away pyramid. So when he grounds the close pyramid, the voltage reading from the far away pyramid changes, which shouldn't naturally happen. Because these are, after all, just blocks of concrete that this guy has built, but they're communicating. When I connect here, the temperature is going down. You see, zero. When I, when, I, when I take it off, the temperature is 12. When I connecting, null point, null. When I taking the ener energy out, that the temperature immediately, there is no, uh, no, no, we don't need to wait. You know, the temperature measurement always need a kind until the, the reaction, uh, the reaction, the temperature reaction happens. Here, look, null, it is seven, seven grade. I take off and goes down to, 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 uh, okay, the upper part is going up, the, other, uh, the upper part is going up and the other, this is one. Ten, nine, eight, zero. So the, the temperature is other part, the, the lower part is losing, uh, sorry, the upper part is losing the energy. And because the upper part is losing energy, the down part is, is uh, pro producing for compensating the loss. That other one, the other, this will be losing. So the, the upper part losing energy because of the taking, taking off, and the down part because it's now. Is, and the down part, the down part is is uh, producing energy. One. These uh, clips are where you start to see the real temperature anomalies happening. Uh, he shows that the inside of the pyramid, and he reads this on several different thermocouples, uh, when you ground the pyramid, and again, it should be remembered that this is just an insulator, so it, it's not galvanic, obviously, but it is producing a voltage. So when you ground the pyramid, it goes from around, uh, I, I don't know which one he's measuring at this point, uh, but there are a few different voltage and current cur current measurements going on. Uh, when it's in normal state, it measures around 12. But when you ground it, it goes to null, and then it raises to around 6 or 7. And he demonstrates with a few different series of measurements that when you... Uh, when the upper part of the pyramid loses energy, when you ground the upper part, the bottom of the pyramid is communicating with the upper part of the pyramid, and just like the pyramids were communicating in the previous set of experiments, uh, the uh, lower part produces extra energy to compensate for the loss in the upper part. And he also says that this sort of these anomalies that you're seeing, and they're only going to get stranger from this point on in the video. Uh, one of the first things he said to me when I got off the train se uh, station was that the particle physics model of the world is flawed because at the very surface, very basic medieval level physics, the apple falling to the earth is a natural sort of physical phenomena. It explains well enough, but as you get closer and closer to these objects, it becomes clearer and clearer that they are based on a, a time basis of reality and not a particle one. And he said that they recently discovered the Higgs boson. And I'm looking it up now. It's predicted that the half-life of the Higgs boson is 100 yoctoseconds, or 100 septillionths of a second. And he says, before that and after that, these particles literally don't exist. So you're seeing that matter is made up of a matrix, and it comes in from someplace else, and then it goes back to that place. 
which is entirely unobservable to us. So the same kind of effect can be observed in nuclear particles. That's, that's just simple half-life uh, physic, physical models. So when these particles decay, it's a time basis, not a particle one. And you, he's saying that physical sciences should take a harder look at the fact that this is a product of time and it's not a product of natural, uh, natural decay. So to clarify more for people who don't understand the concept of a half-life, it's if I have one gram of, let's say, tritium, which is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, uh, it produces, let's say, I'm, I don't know much about measurement of radiation, but let's say it produces just 10 radiation. You know, that's not an actual measurement of it, but 10. And then a half-life is about a decade. So after a decade, it should produce around five. So you have a general idea, but there is no possible way to look at a particle and say, this individual particle will decay in five years. The half-life gives the probability of about 50%. So there is no definitive way to measure this. It is just a guess. And it's not like reacting baking soda with vinegar in chemical uh, in chemistry, which produces a concrete reaction. This is literally just a product of time. And he's saying that this product of time is should become the new basis of physical uh, physical sciences. And as if uh, these temperature anomalies and uh, current and voltage anomalies weren't enough, there are also within these pyramids time anomalies. And that's one of the things that he said uh, contributed to this pyramid reading only 700 as opposed to what the uh, 8, 820 to 900 that we were seeing in the other pyramid was that he had changed the natural shape of it. And he did this for these time experiments. Now again, I just want to mention that as he says in this video himself, maybe it's just a sort of a natural uh, drift in the, this watch, but he did it with two separate watches. And they both apparently showed a five second difference. And this was an experiment where uh, he drilled a hole inside the pyramid to put these watches at the base because he says time goes slower and put the watches in there and then seal it over with concrete, which I saw photos of. But again, it's not as uh, hermetical of a seal as could be made, but it demonstrated a proof of concept. And it's exciting to hear him talk about this and say that he's making another pyramid, a larger one, to see if he can demonstrate this more definitively, which I think would be just fascinating to see. But here's the video of him explaining these uh, experiments. Here, a uh, watch placed to see the, to see the, the, t t uh, the time difference, maybe. In my understanding and my calculations, the, the inside the pyramid, the, the time should be go slower than outside. But in, we put here two two watches, mm -hmm. put this way in, and it was there for nine months. November from November three to to September something. So it was a long a long period, and we have taken off taken off the the watch, but it was just five seconds time difference, and five five seconds is not a. a it could be uh, just the, 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 the failure or just the difference in, on, of, the, of, the, of, the measure, of the measuring. So it could be a, a measuring difference. So it cannot, we can, cannot leave on five seconds that this, this is uh, uh, the, the time difference outside and inside difference is five seconds. This is not, it's not, a, not a, a proof of any time difference. So, but I, I, I thought, why is this the case? Because, because for having a, having a, a real time difference, there should be a, a wider, uh, a bigger, bigger uh, pyramid. Because any, for having a different time, di a different time, the space inside and outside should be separated hermetically and here the difference between the, the watch and the, the outside 
space, first of all, very small. The second is, is whatever we do is not a real hermetical closure of the, of the watch. So you're saying so, if it was a larger pyramid and it was sealed up? Yeah, the difference. Uh, I believe in that case we could we could uh, prove that there is a time difference within the pyramid and outside the pyramid. Uh, within the pyramid, it's, uh, it could be explained by the temper by the temperature and the and the voltage difference as well, because the high energy space, the high energy system, different uh, behave differently than the small energy system. But this is the this is the this is the. Uh, point it for the future. I will build a higher, a bigger pyramid in my other place, and we will see what in that case happens. These experiments are uh, basically of uh, this hydrogen accelerator that he's built, and he has a bottle of hydrogen that accelerates in a circle. And he says himself again that he's just an amateur experimenter, but this demonstrates a proof of concept, and he would like to make it. You know, he would like to invest and have something much larger so that you could just see concrete movement with your own eyes. But essentially in this experiment, he accelerates the hydrogen and this radiation, which he's said is responsible for the, the quantum anomalies and, and temperature anomalies, it's quantum radiation that happens uh, as a process. It's a process of time and it causes the anomalies in the pyramids. It impacts the hydrogen while it's accelerating, creating again another conflict. And he's put a sort of fulcrum on his hydrogen accelerator and the end of it, uh, at the end of the fulcrum, over a full day and night of this, he's measured a difference of about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeters. And again, that's showed on page 154 of his, 152 of uh, matter, uh, the matrix of information. Uh, because he, again, proposes that matter is not concrete but it's sort of flowing through time as time goes on and you can see over a period of a day and night how it it begins over at this point but then it lifts which is very strange and uh, this is what he's demonstrating now and again this experiment I kind of have to take his word for it but then he shows me something that I can actually see with my own eyes, which is probably the magnetic tests are some of the most fascinating tests I've seen in person because I've seen this stuff before online, but I always figured that they would just fake it. And I'll show you, you'll see that after he shows the, uh, the hydrogen accelerator experiments. But again, he's demonstrating over and over that these effects work and that you can see for yourself. And he's saying like this, this sort of thing physically just shouldn't be happening. Uh, and yet here it is, on video, and in front of my own eyes, which is very, very strange. This is a hydrogen balloon here, connected. Okay. And inside the hydrogen, up to now as well. And it was not the same way, not the same way hanged up, because it's just... And that was the, that was the point which was showing against the... Uh, uh, measuring road. So any a small a small change here was exaggerated there, and I have measured 0.5 millimeter for a day, for a day of accelerating uh, 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 day or night, day and night, maybe for half a year because I have to have to improve and improve and improve and improve because the first the first time was simply nothing to be measured. But I trusted that this will be okay. And in that in after the that it was it was fine. It was measured something. So you're saying this measurement came from there is a radiation that comes up and as the hydrogen accelerates it impacts the hydrogen and creates an effect. And the and the conflict here between between the hydrogen and the it makes the it, it, the, the, the the conflict is is lifting it up. So there is a change of height here or a difference in space. Yeah, the, the conflict the conflict is hanging lifting up the the system. The conflict between the between the quantum impact that we have seen in the in the pyramid is hang is lifting up the 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 system and because it's lifting up because that was 
that was fixed this here. And in that case, if it goes up, because the conflict that goes down, and the change that there was 0.5 millimeters, and uh, the end was not so not it was less than uh, this is this is too too big for measuring uh, 0.5 because it's uh, it's 0.5 as well. So it was a very tiny tiny end of the of this of this. So uh, when I when I when they come to me looking at these and they have my description about the high energy generation of the free energy, if somebody they ask if when they say okay we we don't want to deal with small scale experiments, okay fine. And I should also mention uh, he told me about these investors that came over from Shanghai, these smart business savvy uh, young investors who were interested in these ideas and essentially what you could it could be argued that this could be a form of free energy because you're accelerating this hydrogen and uh, causing a movement and in larger systems this could be arguably harnessed and he said that they said well we want uh, we want bigger proof we want something that you can just literally draw energy out of and Zoltan is saying basically I'm showing you a proof of concept that the physical particle nature of physics and reality is wrong and that it should be time based but these people just want you know the free energy the the money from it and the power and this is just like uh, the Egli interviews how Pavlita uh, you know on to these amazing scientific advancements with huge medical impl uh, implications and I encourage you to watch the interviews I did with Egli but people just want money out of it but Zoltan, and he's, wrote, he's written half a dozen books and he wants to write one more, he's demonstrating that the universe works in a completely and wildly different way than what we think it is. And that's just, to me, an interesting extra, it adds an extra element to the story. I need, need this third, third accumulator as well for, for half 36 volts and because of the damage just have 24, and with 24 it will be not so demonstrating, but I, I have it in the in the YouTube. If you go to the YouTube and take, and you put it inside that magnetic blow, then you will see the full experiment. You see, you know, I have measurements very, very, very simple. I don't need too much, too big, too big, uh, creations for having very interesting uh, effects. You know, you know that the mag magnets are attractive, yes? Yes. Look, look at this. The specific construction, the specific wiring of this electromagnet. Uh, and again, I said, telling you, this is not the, the most powerful, because I need for that at least uh, 36 uh, voltage. But 36 is also not a big one, and uh, and that, in a kind of uh, effect can be can be demonstrated as well. I have to, I have to connect these two. So again, this will be a small impact because I need 36 volt for this. But if I if I switch on, okay. this is this is in that case not. Attracting blow away. Look. You see? It's pushing away. Pushing away. A magnet, and this is a this is a and this is a iron uh, ring. It's not about I now switch off. And now I'm switching on. I'm switching off. I'm switching on. So something electromagnet which is pushing, not attracting, because of certain wiring and because of certain uh, uh, quantum impact inside, because it's a quantum impact. So, wh what, is, what is between the two? Just quantum system.
So, at the end of the day, I don't know what these could be used. Really don't know what a technology could be built of on these effect, quantum effect. But this is an effect. And with 36 asteroids, <coughs> without one in included, this is a much, much higher. This is a. Uh, I've never seen anything push metal away. That's when I say, nobody believes. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, keeping it in, 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 a, in a secret. This is not a secret point. Let people use it. Here the point is that because, because the pushing power, the pushing blow, I don't, I don't uh, name it magnetic wind because there is a category and a understanding of magnetic wind somewhere already in the physics exists. So, you know, it's a very simple again. I don't use thousands of pounds for having it. It's a small one. This is an A. Now I turn it on. You see, it's in, in, in the other 36 volts, it starts to, start to circulate because the, because the central pushing power uh, is, uh, it's, it's left, uh, turned on, turned off, turned on, turned off. I will be left leaving it this way, maybe it's better to look. The pushing blow, the magnetic blow uh, coming from the from the middle, it doesn't allow the nail to to stand in the middle. It's pushing away from the middle. The temperature anomalies are fascinating, and so is the hydrogen test. All of these experiments are blowing my mind. But this is flipping a switch, and a magnetic coil is pushing a steel gasket away. And it doesn't matter which direction this gasket is oriented or, or which direction it's facing, it's pushing it away. And then after that, he demonstrates the same with uh, an iron nail. And he says that he's going to detail the winding of this coil in his final book, which he's working on at the moment. And uh, I can't wait to, uh, to make my own because I've seen, again, experiments of this before. And I always figured that the experimenter was just cheating. I figured he was taking a little pendulum and moving it back and forth. And when it was far away from the coil, they would snap a photo of it. Or I figured they would build a big magnet, you know, over to the side out of the frame and pull it so that it looked like it was being repelled. But again, there was nothing off to the side. I saw this for myself. And it's so weird. It just shouldn't exist. But it does. Because we, we were working and making the, the top, uh, disturbing the, the situation. We are, we were in, we, we, we interrupted the, the natural, natural, natural way of, of the process, and there we have not touched really the pyramid. Seven seventy-five. It was seven seventy. Seven seven. No, let's see. Maybe, maybe happens. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, look, it's very, very. 75, I'm connecting, 74, you see, 74, 72, you see, you see, I Yeah, connected. I just connected it, and now taking 70, it off. Uh, off, on, on, off, on. And this uh, temperature gauge is not connected to the pyramid. It's a, voltage, it's a voltage, from there, the voltage of that pyramid is changing when I conduct this pyramid. 72, I, off. And these two pyramids aren't connected at all? No, absolutely not. Just the quantum connection, nothing else. Because, because the, this is the end. You see, now it's, it's 80, 80, 81, that no, nothing else here it touched. 79, oh, it works, I start to work. 78, 79. Now I will connect, okay? Now, connected. That was an immediate change? Down off. to 49. Off. 48. But show more, but this is because of the weather conditions. Anyway, it shows that uh, 
current is coming down here, losing energy from inside, and losing its pyramid, that pyramid is, is uh, acting, and there, there the, the voltage is changing, lowing da doing, do going down, because it's compensating the, the loss in this pyramid. Now, in the first series of tests, uh, when I first got there, we were looking at the pyramid and interacting with it, and he was demonstrating these temperature anomalies, and when he tried to demonstrate a sort of communication between pyramids, the energy inside of it from the, the quantum conflict had already sort of been discharged into the ground or into the reading equipment. But after these series of tests he showed me inside, he said that the energy inside of these pyramids had already, again, gone back towards a sort of equilibrium, and we observed this communication happening much more effectively than we were before. So it's, it's clear that from his demonstrations, one, there's a temperature anomaly and there are, it's producing a, a current and a voltage. This is not galvanic. This is not happening because it's uh, comp contacting the ground. Uh, he's able to demonstrate uh, quantum conflict coming from a hydrogen accelerator that proves his idea that the uh, process-based radiation is coming up from the ground and he's also able to demonstrate magnetic anomalies. He also showed me uh, anomalies with light proving that it had a, a again a mechanical impact uh, that should not again exist and this all just goes back to his theory that I almost think that because he's not trying to profit off of these pyramids. He's not the, you know, put a razor inside a pyramid, it'll keep it sharp. He brought up none of that. The pyramids, to me, seem almost like a side story to his belief that the universe uh, is a process of time. And physical reality is only a process of time and not a process of particles. Because the closer you look to individual particles, the clearer it becomes that the universe is a flux in, in time. And again, when we were discussing ball lightning, Dr. Ailey said essentially the same thing, that this ball lightning could be a, a process in time. And he called it, in one of his books, the key to the fourth dimension. And it was interesting, kind of, this again is just an aside, uh, Neither Zoltan nor Egli mentioned this, but there's a book called Flatlands, and it brings it up. Uh, it writes from the perspective of two-dimensional living, you know, creatures, and, and again, they've never interacted with the third dimension. But what happens when a three-dimensional object moves through a two-dimensional one? They aren't able to explain it because all of their models of physics are only made around the idea that there are two dimensions. But when you start to envision these things as happening in time, and you start to account for the fourth dimension, you can explain things like these temperature anomalies, you can explain the magnetic anomalies, uh, the, the hydrogen accelerator anomalies, and you can also explain things like magnetism, things like what ball lightning is when it's, because it, ball lightning is one thing, that's the observable part, but when it strikes the ground, it creates highly magnetized soil in a lot of instances. It also literally, uh, Egli mentioned where people were able to view time in four dimensions or to view from a distance, almost like remote viewing. And that's a rare scenario, but it happens. And it's able to explain these things that shouldn't exist. But again, he said like, there's no uh, physical reason why we should deny the existence of a fourth dimension because it's just an accepted fact and yet it's not incorporated into 90% of physics. But what, what Zoltan is saying is physics should be the very base of it, should be a process base. And that matter is simply a matrix of information, which is what he titled his, his book off of. And uh, I'll try to link, I'll link to his website and to his YouTube channel because uh, his stuff's fascinating. And this is the final series of tests where he's able to prove a communication between the pyramids.